Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this regular scheduled meeting of the Beaver Creek City Council. May we have a roll call, please? Council Member Adams. Here. Council Member Bales. Here. Council Member Curran. Here. Council Member Dewar. Here. Council Member Schwartz. Here. Vice Mayor Garcia. Here. Mayor Stone. Here. And if you would, please stand with me for the pledge. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we can take just a moment to uh, pause on everything going on around the world today, mostly in Ukraine, but here at home, we still have issues that we're facing here on a daily basis. So just take a pause uh, for a moment here, if you don't mind. Thank you. All right, we have an agenda before us. Any changes? I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, minutes. We have minutes. We'll start with the February 22nd work session minutes. Any changes? Move to approve. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve the February 22nd work session minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I will. Uh, next are the minutes from the February 28th regular scheduled meeting. Any comments? Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for the February 28th regular council meeting minutes as submitted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? One. Thank you. And thank you for taking over while I was gone. All right, ordinances, resolutions, and PUDs. First is Ordinance 22-07. Ordinance 22-07, an ordinance by Beaver Creek City Council repealing old Section 31.16 legislation of the City of Beaver Creek codified ordinances and enacting a new Section 31.16 legislation. All right, Mr. McHugh, I think you're going to give a summary on this one, please. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council, the, uh, this one, uh, this is a particular ordinance is to update uh, the con our codified ordinance section on number of readings of uh, the code to correspond with the charter change that uh, Council approved to put on the ballot and the citizens approved sometime, and this section was not changed, so we've been operating under the charter, so that the intent of this was to just bring it in line with the charter. That's, that was a change in it. Okay, thank you. Any comments from council? All right, this was, uh, this ordinance was sponsored by uh, council member Schwartz. Do I have a motion? Thank you. Move to approve ordinance 22-07. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-07. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks. Next is Resolution 21-11. Resolution 22-11, a resolution to declare the necessity and intent to acquire certain parcels or real estate and other property interests owned by Jeffrey S. Trapp and Denise L. Trapp, trustees of the Trapp Family Living Trust, with interest by others for the Shaker Town Road Widening Project in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio. Oops. Thank you. We'll go back to it after that. Can we back up just a second? I just noticed and uh, was pointed out to me by the vice mayor that we needed a roll call on that last ordinance. Uh, is, that, is that correct, Steve? Do you think we needed a roll call? No. We no. do not? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, please. Very good. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Um, one of our uh, capital projects planned for this year is, is an improvement along Shaker Town Road. Uh, generally, the project it begins at North Fairfield and goes to uh, Carthage. 
Um, the project, it'll reconstruct the roadway, a curb gutter, storm sewer, uh, side path along the north side and sidewalk along the south side of the road. Uh, in order to construct the project, we had to acquire additional property rights from uh, 13 properties. Um, on the good side, we've been able to negotiate um, deals with 12 of the 13, but there is one property, unfortunately, we weren't able to reach an agreement with, and that was the, uh, the trap property. The um, property is located at uh, 3334 Shakertown Road. It's immediately to the east of the entrance to Ballymead along the north side of the roadway. Uh, the proposed acquisition, uh, there's a, uh, I should mention, there's a uh, existing highway easement. It's, it looks like a rather large area, the yellow, but um, the existing highway easement is kind of shown there and in that blue line is kind of hard to see. So uh, the city essentially controls from the blue line to the roadway already. Uh, the additional, what we're purchasing is about 15 feet beyond that line. And additional, in addition to the uh, permanent right of way in yellow, there's also gonna be a temporary grading easement in red. And the purpose of that is to um, modify his driveways to meet the, the new uh, grade of the roadway. So he's a smooth transition from his parking area back to the street. Uh, the uh, appraised fair market value of the property is uh, $7,275. And what we're asking for today is permission to go ahead and uh, appropriate uh, both of these properties. Uh, what, and there's two pieces of legislation we need to pass to do that. First is the resolution before you now. The second is the ordinance that you'll, you'll hear from next. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Do we have any? Any feedback from the Trapp family that we've heard recently? Uh, he really hasn't communicated with us. There was a letter he, he sent to me early on, which I responded to. Uh, aside from that, he hasn't communicated with um, the engineering office, or we have a consultant also that's helping us out. So, Thank you. Will he still have uh, a pretty good parking area back there when it's completed? Uh, he will. You can see the, the yellow line. The, the side path is going to be, you can see on the other side of Ballymead there where the side path is. We're going to project that side path where it's going to line up crossing the intersection, and then it's going to bow closer to the roadway. So. Uh, you can see where that yellow line is. It's not really into his parking. It's more or less his, his driveway area. All right. Do I have a motion? Motion Anyone? to approve resolution 22-11. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-11. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now, the connecting ordinance is next, which is 22-09. Ordinance 22-09, to appropriate certain real property interests owned by Jeffrey S. Trapp and Denise L. Trapp, trustees of the Trapp Family Living Trust for the Shakertown Road Widening Project in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio. Thank you. Jeff, anything you want to add on this one, it's, other than it's just the ordinance? Uh, yes, sir. It's just the accompanying ordinance. It, it goes with the resolution you guys just approved. All right, any questions on this? Do I have a motion? Motion. Oops, sorry. This is an ordinance. Is there anyone present this evening that would like to address council on this uh, ordinance? Seeing none, we will move on. Now I'll accept a motion, please. Motion to move ordinance 22-09 to the second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-09. Uh, to move it on to the second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Next is Resolution 22-12. Resolution 22-12, a resolution to declare the necessity and intent to acquire certain parcels for real estate and other property interests owned by Christopher Joseph Harris with interest by others for the Shakertown Road widening project in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, and like I said, we were able to reach agreements with 12 of the 13. Uh, we did reach an agreement with, with Mr. Harris. Uh, the the hang-up was uh, his mortgage was fairly new, and his mortgage company uh, was reluctant to grant a release for the land the city would buy for right-of-way purposes. So in order for us to get clean title to the property we'd be purchasing, we have to go through the appropriations process. And, and Mr. Harris has said he's willing to cooperate any way he can during that process. Uh, so long as we keep to the original agreement, which we already uh, verbally agreed to. 
questions? Motion. I, I actually do have a question. Okay, go. I'm looking at that temporary right of way. It mm -hmm. looks like it looks like it's almost going right up to his front door. <laughs> Yes, it, it does. Yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, the aerial shifted just a bit, but yeah, we are going all the way up to his garage with the driveway because there's such a, um, a sh short distance between where the walk is going to be directly in front of where the yellow line is shown there. So we, we don't have a lot of um, horizontal distance to take out the difference in grade. So to make his driveway as flat as possible, we have to come all the way back to his, to his garage door basically. Do all of the trees come down there? Uh, the trees within the red area will? Yes. Yes. Okay. Doesn't look like there's much there. Anyone else? Motion. Motion to approve resolution 22-12. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-12. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is Ordinance 22-10. Ordinance 22-10, to appropriate certain real property interests owned by Christopher Joseph Harris for the Shakertown Road Widening Project in the city of Beaver Creek, Ohio. Thank you. Anything to add? Yeah. All right. This is the accompanying yeah. ordinance uh, to follow that resolution. Any further discussion? I move Ordinance 22-10. Second. Before I call for the vote, I'll ask again. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address council on this ordinance? Seeing none, we will close public input. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-10, moving it to the second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, ordinance 22-11. Ordinance 22-11, an ordinance by Beaver Creek City Council repealing current Chapter 35, Section 37, Fire Insurance Trust Fund of the codified ordinances of the City of Beaver Creek and enacting a new Chapter 35, Section 37, Fire Insurance Trust Fund to the codified ordinances of the City of Beaver Creek. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. The uh, ordinance you have before you is a repeal and replacement of an existing ordinance um, and basically what that does is if a house were to burn down or a commercial structure were to burn down, um, we get a, the city would hold on deposit a portion of their insurance proceeds to ensure that they either remove the, the rubble from the building if they're not going to rebuild or they rebuild it and get it under site or under roof um, so that it's not a half a building sitting out there for years. Um, sometimes the project may run out of money and then they'll just sit there half vacant. If, if, but we hold on to that percentage so that we can ensure that that gets done in a timely manner. Um, again, this ordinance was last uh, changed in 1983, and so what we're proposing to do here is bring the language up to o ORC language so that we get the dollar right, the dollar amounts right. It was uh, $2,000 for every 10,000. Now it's uh, three for every 15. I believe that's the numbers. One to two. One for every ten, and now it's now it's or it was one thousand for every twenty, and now it is two for every fifteen. So it's 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 a, a big difference when you're talking about a house, a four hundred thousand dollar house. You would get a, a much bigger deposit than a than a, what we have currently. So this gets us up to market rates, and so we're proposing to change the language as as provided. Thank you. Any other comments? Did I hear a motion? Move to approve ordinance 22-11 to the second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-11, moving it to the second reading. Again, before I call for a vote. <laughs> it's been a while since been I've been there. <laughs> I won't say that there's not an empty room, but it... Uh, but is there anyone here tonight that would like to address council on this ordinance? Seeing none, we will move on. Uh, so I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-11. Moving it to the second reading, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carries, thank you. Next is ordinance 22-12. 
Ordinance 22-12, an ordinance by Beaver Creek City Council hereby reaffirming the ban on possessing, selling, or discharging fireworks in the City of Beaver Creek as set forth in Section 93.09 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of Beaver Creek pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 3743.45. Thank you. Chief. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, as we know, the Governor of Ohio recently signed House Bill 172 amending Ohio Revised Code 374345 that goes into effect July 1, 2022, allowing any person authorized to possess consumer-grade fireworks to discharge, ignite, or explode fireworks on their property or, if permitted, on another person's property on certain designated days of the year. House Bill 172 also provides that pursuant to Home Rule Authority, the city may choose to restrict the days and times that a person may discharge consumer-grade fireworks or may impose a complete ban on the use of consumer-grade fireworks. <coughs> the possession, sell, or discharge of fireworks poses a significant danger to the public and may cause serious injuries as well as significant property damage, especially in residential and business areas. Uh, the staff is recommending the adoption of this ordinance that continues the ban on the possession, sell, or discharge of fireworks as set forth in uh, Section 9309 of the Codified Ordinances pursuant to Higher Revised Code 374345. Thank you. Questions? I have one, Chief, and that is, do you know what our neighbors are doing? I mean, is Kettering and uh, Fairborn, I mean, if they're not doing something similar, we're going to be hearing it anyway. I mean, I'm just curious if you knew. When we had our work session um, at the time, uh, we were the first ones to kind of come to this uh, resolution, come to this point. The city of Dayton has banned them already. They did it back uh, earlier this year or late last year. And I believe in talking to my uh, colleagues, uh, we were the first to take action on this. So I have not checked on it since the work session, but at that time, uh, all of the folks in the area were still pondering what to do. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I think just a comment, Mayor, and to say we, we had a, a work session. Um, we ran through a number of devil's advocates type positions to see, well, what can we do here? But to uh, solicit input from the public if there's a, a strong opinion on, on what to do. But uh, I think we have a great guidance from the chief uh, to follow. Uh, and so that's where that's our position or my position. And so uh, but I, I welcome discussion from the, the, the public if there's if there's something we're missing or uh, a particular opinion you have. Yeah. Yeah, I thought this might have gotten a few people mm -hmm. to the meeting, but it. Uh... Well, one of the major concerns that I expressed at the council meeting, your honor, to the members of the council was, yes, they talk about uh, what they call consumer grade fireworks. Mm -hmm. A great concern is two things, the density of properties in Beaver Creek, the idea that you could have a person on private property, you could have two or three in a block that might fire off fireworks, catch somebody's roof on fire. Why? Because the possibility that they wouldn't be using consumer grade, Your Honor, they would be using the high test stuff. The argument back, well, you can't buy that stuff. They'll get it and they'll put it on their property and somebody's going to get hurt. And it uh, seemed to me very, very dangerous to be having this kind of a circumstance. It's not talking about having it in some big public park once a day. It, here you got over 20 different days where people can fire off fireworks and create mayhem in neighborhoods, in my opinion. Anyone else? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Uh, there we go again. Uh, ordinance, uh, Your Honor. Is there anyone, is there anyone present this evening? Oh, that, anyone uh, present? Would like to address council on this ordinance? Not this week. I guess the hard part is I know the answer. <laughs> 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 Seeing none, we will we will move on. Now I accept an ordinance or er, a motion, please. Mayor, I move. I motion to move ordinance 22-12 to a second reading. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve ordinance 22-12, moving it to the second reading. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next is ordinance 22-13. Mr. Casera. 
Ordinance 22-13 to approve supplemental appropriations and certify additional revenue for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020 and ending December 31, 2022, and to amend ordinances 22-08, 22-03, 22-01 and 21-26. Yes, sir. Good evening, uh, Mayor, members of City Council. This is my uh, bi-weekly uh, appropriation uh, <laughs> recap here. So uh, bear with me. I did uh, give you an updated version of this. Uh, one of the uh, funds was actually uh, incorrect, so we uh, corrected that before we passed the legislation. And I'll go over these real briefly. Uh, the FEMA fund, uh, we received what we believe to be our final reimbursement. Uh, I said that last time I was here, and uh, uh, some additional money came in. This actually was the uh, amount for the administration. They gave you up to 5% of the uh, uh, total cost of the uh, event. Uh, for administration, putting it all together, auditing it, uh, and submitting it, that type of thing. And uh, what we got last time was the federal portion. I didn't really think we were going to get a state portion, which is a 12.5% of that. And uh, they did send us a check for that. So uh, we have to appropriate, uh, certify the revenue coming in, the 9045 and then uh, that's all going into the general fund. It was basically my time pulling all that together for the last couple of years. So I believe that will be the final reimbursement from that event from 2019. Uh, the next item is the police department received uh, grant funding last year from the Attorney General as part of the Ohio Law Enforcement Body Armor Grant uh, to get uh, reinforced vests, body armor, and accessories. Uh, as they were doing their process, they realized that uh, they didn't appropriate all the money that they had available for the grant. They contacted us and said that they have an additional $25,000 for us to utilize. So what we're doing is uh, certifying that uh, amount of money. And then, uh, again, there's a 25% match. So we're appropriating the entire amount to buy the uh, uh, accessories and the uh, body armor and then uh, taking in the 18750 which is the grant portion, the 75% of that total amount. So uh, that was good news. Well, again, we already have a, uh, a vest grant. If you recall that, that's normally in our budget every year. That's a 50% uh, reimbursement. So again, we're going to buy them with this money first. And then, uh, so again, we'll end up getting more vests earlier than we had originally planned in the budget. Uh, the next item is... Now we're venturing into uh, ARP. Uh, you recall the uh, ARP money uh, that was going to be distributed in uh, two different uh, tranches, they like to call them. And uh, we received ours, first one in May. We were going to get another one, May or June this year. Uh, but what they had set up in the beginning was a process where any uh, townships, municipalities that didn't claim their money didn't apply to get reimbursed for uh, the uh, ARPA funds, that would go back into a pool and it'd be redistributed to all the people that did participate and activate uh, their uh, draw from the uh, ARPA funds. So uh, again, we uh, got notified that our share of that was $9,982. So we need to uh, certify that revenue and then we're gonna just throw that into the uh, stormwater project budget. Uh, we knew that that was an amount there that uh, we, we were probably under budgeted anyway, so that money will help out in uh, getting some more of that project completed. Uh, the last thing with the ARP funds is that we, uh, obviously we've, you've seen all the uh, results of the additional upgraded communication uh, equipment that we bought for the council chambers, the microphones, everything like that. Uh, when we did that, we utilized uh, MVC's help the Miami Valley Communication Council, uh, they actually came in and helped us uh, decipher what equipment we needed to uh, do that to help us install it, uh, that type of thing. We originally had that in the uh, budget for a dollar amount. We didn't encumber it because we thought we were going to spend it in 2021. It turned out that they didn't send us the bill till uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So again, that money just kind of went into the fund balance, so we need to pull that out and say, okay, we need to appropriate this amount of money in the 2022 budget. So 
again, that's what you're seeing there for the $2,560 is to uh, allocate that to the uh, art project that we had already funded. And again, just to let you know that that uh, project came in below the original budget anyway, even with this uh, additional cost. So I just wanted to make uh, that uh, mention of that. And then the uh, last thing I have is uh, the West Banco property. When we uh, demolished that, we put out a, a bid project of what we thought was there. I never really know when those type of projects, well, they, of course, they found uh, asbestos, a little bit of asbestos in the tile and some various uh, small places. But again, that has to be uh, mitigated. And with that, there was also uh, more heavily reinforced uh, and deeper concrete than uh, we thought in a couple of sections of the bank. And so our uh, contractor had to do additional work that was above and beyond the original scope. So we just needed to uh, uh, finalize that project and uh, appropriate that amount of money for uh, to finalize that uh, the final step of uh, getting that demolished and bringing it down to uh, uh, where it is right now. So. Uh, again, that money, uh, what we've had in the past in the budget was that all the money for the, those uh, parcels and the uh, demolition was split between the general fund and the uh, police fund, uh, 65 in the police and 35 based on square footage, that type of thing. And so we just needed to uh, appropriate that amount of money for uh, that extra $8,250 in those two funds. And then the uh, last item is uh, the, again, when we go to close on these properties, uh, everybody gets pro prorated their property taxes. Uh, I kind of thought that that was all going to be done last year. It kind of carried over. Uh, so again, when we get that and they settle that, that's fine. But the bill actually comes to us since we're the owner at the end of the year and we have to pay that bill. And I, quite frankly, just didn't budget for that. Uh, I, again, I thought we were going to have it all completed by the end of the year. So we just need to appropriate that amount of money uh, to uh, pay those property taxes. And again, just to let everybody know that once we've done that, uh, we pay the, the portion that we were supposed to pay and the portion that was part of the closing, then we uh, s submit it to the county auditor to say, that's our land now. It's tax exempt from here on going in the future. So just to let you know that that uh, uh, process did happen. So, And I think that's it. All right. Any questions? Yes. Uh, is this the, in your mind, the or your view, the last of the ARPA funds that are likely to come our way? Well, we still have one more, uh, the the second uh, distribution. Right. So oh, that'll be coming one, probably uh, May or June, is what I understand. But okay. and and again, how they're going to do another reallocation of that at the end, we may end up getting some additional funds or something like that. Because as people start to report what they're using the ARP funds for, again, there might be some places that return it or something like that. So again, you never know, but I wouldn't think it would be anything significant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I had one other question about that. The way you read that uh, redistribution um, was the what was it nine thousand some odd dollars? Mm -hmm. Was that just for the first tranche, or was that total then for both? That's for the, the first. So, so again, what they had, they set up a process that said, you know, you have to apply for it. And for those that didn't apply, they kept extending that time frame to say, please apply, <laughs> please apply. They were trying to get the money out to all the various places, but they had it cut off finally and said, after that, whatever the pool is, however we distributed the original money. That's what we're going to do with this uh, additional money that was never appropriated to the uh, townships and other places that uh, could have could have been available to them. Right. So I guess my question is, do we expect a route the same amount after we receive the second tranche, or is that is that ninety nine hundred? Was that kind of it, it's hard to say they, did, they didn't really come up with a process after this process. Right. So again, uh, we have to start reporting uh, the end of March to let them know how we're spending our money and what we're using it for and what we're budgeting for, that type of thing. So I was always thinking that eventually some folks may have taken what they needed, but they may not use it. 
And I think that process, you're right, it'll be the same thing, is they'll go back and say, well, we have a million dollars that nobody utilized or something like that, and we'll distribute that back to the uh, uh, communities that applied and followed the uh, rules and uh, accepted the money in the past. So it's hard to say. I mean, uh, you just don't know, but uh, you know, it'll probably be like the tornado funds. We'll probably get, you know, 2000 and 25, we may get another distribution of $2,000 or something like that. So it's, uh, it's hard to say, but their, their process is there that says that they will do that based on whatever they have. So, and, but there's no time frame on it. Anyone else? I just have one question. Uh, I'm noticing in the revenue fund, it's to 101, we're 9,045, and to 250, it's 9,045. Uh, just confusing that they're both the same amount. Oh, well, where's that? It's under the, where you got it listed out, increased oh. revenue and, and then. It's the line items, general the line fund. Items. And oh, the general fund and the, well, again, because what happens is that, you know, per the guidelines of the, uh, uh, the uh, state of Ohio, it has to flow through the 250 fund so the money actually has to come into the 250, and then we appropriate it because we're going to send it back to the fund that generated the cost. So again, you'll see a appropriation and then revenue coming into the general fund. That's why that's the same. It gets a little confusing, but when they, again, even when they set up like the opioid, we just received the information about that. We have to set up a separate fund, and again, everything has to flow through that fund, and then how you distribute it back to where it's being utilized is uh, up to the state, depending on what kind of uh, federal funds they are. So, good question, though. Anyone else? Now, before we, uh, before we uh, vote on this ordinance or even get public input, I would like to uh, have a motion to amend Ordinance 22-13, because it is different now than it was. Right. So I need to amend to make it current with today's information. A motion to that effect. Move to amend, Your Honor. Second. Any questions? I have a motion and a second to amend Ordinance 22-13 based on the information presented this evening. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. This is the this is an ordinance. So, is there anyone present this evening that would like to address council on this ordinance? Seeing none, we will move on. Uh, do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve Ordinance 22-13 as amended. Second, as, as a single reading. Right, as a single yeah. reading. Yeah. Vice Mayor Garcia. Yes. Council Member Dewar. Yes. Councilmember Kern. Yes. Councilmember Adams. Yes. Councilmember Schwartz. Yes. Councilmember Bales. Yes. Mayor Stone. Yes. Thank you. All right, next is resolution 22-10. Resolution 22-10, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute collective bargaining agreements with the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 160, covering sergeants, patrol officers, and civilian employees. Good evening again. Well, this has been a, a little bit of time coming. We started back in November, a little bit of a uh, break for the holidays, a little bit of issue with COVID. However, the contract between the city of Beaver Creek and members of the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 160 expired back on December 31st, 2021. And uh, formal negotiations occurred between the two parties, culminating with an agreed-upon settlement that was ratified by the members of the three collective bargaining units within the FOP. And these agreements are for a three-year period beginning uh, January 1, 2022 and ending December 31, 2024. And uh, some of the highlights that I put on the agenda item here are uh, the wages that are retroactive back to January 1, 2022 is a two and three quarter increase in 2022 and a 3% increase both in 2023 and 2024. We increased the night shift differential from 70 cents an hour to 75 cents an hour. 
in the weekend shift differential from 50 cents to 55 cents an hour. Uh, another item that um, is now similar in all the contracts within the city, uh, which is something we, we were working toward, employee health insurance contribution. Uh, the language is capping any additional increase to 19% during the term of this agreement. And the new language, <coughs> excuse me, which is now similar in all the contracts, all full-time members hired on or after January 1st of 2022 shall be offered the HDHP, which with the HSA is their health insurance plan, with an option to buy up to the PPO plan, with the member paying the entire cost difference between the HDHP with HSA to the PPO. And in order for us to keep up with the efficiency and the effectiveness of the uh, our daily operations, we did negotiate several other items that were non-monetary, uh, such as personal days. Now, the personal days align with city policy, uh, so basically that is on alignment now. We also worked on uh, the conversion of sick leave. Uh, it's now um, to where you have to have a minimum of 66 days left versus 33. Uh, we worked on shift preference to where uh, we have a little bit more efficiency in where we can put our specialized skills, our motor officer, our canine, uh, evidence technicians, and so forth. And uh, we cleaned up some old language from bereavement leave and comp time use. So we did do quite a bit of negotiating on uh, some of the non-monetary things as well. Uh, how we're going to take a little bit of time with the, the breaks and the holidays and a little bit of illness there. So staff is recommending this approval of this resolution, which I believe would allow the city manager to uh, sign these agreements with us. Thanks, Chief. Any questions? Please. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank Chief and the negotiating team for a, a good job, and I do appreciate the FOP as well. It was a difficult uh, time there with the holidays, and then COVID uh, played its role uh, with the team, um, uh, for which it uh, was a slight delay because of that. Uh, but I appreciate the FOP continuing to negotiate and coming to the table as well. Um, and uh, we just appreciate we were able to get this done without too much delay. So I appreciate their cooperation and always look forward to working with them. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Comment? I move to approve resolution 22-10. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-10. Any further comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Resolution 22-13. Resolution 22-13, a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the city to operate and maintain traffic signals owned by the Ohio Department of Transportation at the I-675 ramps. Thank you. Jeff? Yes, uh, good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Uh, for, for the past many years, we've had an, an existing agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the uh, city to do maintenance and to do the timing on all the uh, traffic signals at the I-675 ramps. There's a total of seven signals. Uh, the, kind of, the, the real benefit of that is we have uh, timing plans along our major corridors, and it allows us to tie in those ODOT signals to our overall corridor timing plans to get more efficient uh, vehicle progression led down Indian Ripple, North Fairfield, Grange Hall Road. Um, I, I've compared the, the uh, existing agreement to the proposed agreement. Uh, really, it's pretty much identical, except there's been some advances in technology where they include that in this agreement. For example, uh, back in the 90s, we didn't have battery backups. Now all the signals at the ramps all have battery backups. They included language for that. Uh, we now have uh, fiber connections to all those signals. And again, that's something new that's happened since the 90s, and they include that in the agreement, stuff like that. Uh, I should also mention under the current agreement, we get uh, $2,000 per year per signal to pay for the power and maintenance inspections, uh, things of that nature. Uh, with a new agreement, they're increasing that amount to $3,000 per signal. And um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, speak up. Councilmember Dewar, you look like you have a question. Uh, I'm, I'm just weighing it up because I'm thinking of Colonel Glenn. It's outside of our jurisdiction, once he, but I'm just thinking about the coordination of lights. Is that in place? I, it, it doesn't make sure. a, a big difference uh, in my view, but I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the city of Fairburn, I believe, runs a little mini uh, coordinated system of their own out there. It involves a couple of intersections. Uh, there's no connection between our system and their system. 
Uh, there, there was a number of years ago, there used to be a uh, copper interconnect line that connected the Fairborn system to the Beaver Creek system, but uh, that was, was, has long since been, been abandoned. So. Sure. Huh. No, but, thank uh, you. but yeah, I'd be happy to, to speak with Fairborn, see if they have an interest in, there, there would be a capital ex expenditure to, to con physically connect the two systems together. And I could speak with them, see if they'd be interested in sharing that cost or not. I don't think it backs up enough. I was just curious. So um, thank you. Had a thing turned off. How on earth is it doing that? <laughs> I mean, it's off totally. <laughs> oh well. Sorry about that, oh, sir. Fine. Yep. Any other questions? All right. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve resolution 22-13. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve resolution 22-13. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Decision items. We have a uh, liquor license. Okay, good evening once again. Um, we do have a liquor, uh, a new liquor permit request from El Toro. Uh, they are moving from their location on Indian Ripple over to the old Mimi's location, which is at 4402 Walnut Street in the Green. Uh, the Ohio Department of Commerce Division of Liquor Control sent us the notification of this request uh, regarding their new D5 liquor permit for El Toro, uh, again moving to 4402 Walnut Street. Uh, the record checks required by the Ohio Department of Commerce Division of Liquor Control were all conducted on the applicant and the shareholders, and there were no issues, and staff is recommending this application request move forward motion to accept without comment second. I have a motion and a second on the table all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries thanks Thank chief you. all right council time how about we start with uh, council member Curran wow okay thank you your honor uh, Number one, uh, I attended the resident, uh, the mayor's uh, first Thursday event. There was a number of us there. And uh, uh, Mr. Ron mayor. Miller explained to us the whole program, Your Honor, at that uh, particular event. And it was very informative, telling us what role they play in helping the Air Force. And it was uh, very exciting. Uh, number two, uh, Carol Graff, a uh, former uh, mayor and uh, community uh, person, was voted uh, dangerous dame by the League of Women Voters, and uh, uh, Carol, of course, has been involved in a lot of things. <laughs> Danger status, it, it doesn't, re it, what it refers to is, is uh, activity in voting. If you go back to the League of Women Voters, uh, early on they've been activists in getting the right to vote for women, and they've used this title over the years to recognize community leaders. And uh, our own Carol Graff was one of them got recognized here just last week. Uh, next, uh, attended the Power of the Pen, uh, sponsored by the VFW, recognizing uh, students and uh, uh, law enforcement, uh, firefighter uh, of the year people, and it was very exciting. Uh, the mayor was there, vice mayor was there, and it was an exciting evening. Also, uh, a special recognition of uh, the outstanding uh, work that uh, our own council member, council member Doerr and uh, uh, Dr. Smith, gave an outstanding program on Ukraine. It was just uh, excellent, uh, tremendous response from the, from the people that were there asking questions. And I just wanted to salute uh, Council Member Doer, an outstanding job, and pass it on to uh, also uh, uh, Dr. Smith at the, uh, at the uh, Cedarville University. And uh, also, lastly, I'd like to encourage uh, citizens to uh, go to the mayor. The mayor is going to be making some presentations here beginning this week and next week and the week after. And I'd like to encourage uh, citizens to uh, come to those meetings and get informed on our city income tax issue, which we all know is on the ballot in May. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Council Member Schwartz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a few things. So this week, I, or well, last week, I guess, I was very lucky to attend an elected official training with Council Member Adams and Council Member Bales, and it was very informative. It was a great 
day-long event, learned some things, and definitely brought some things back, so excited to do that. Um, additionally, I also wanted to thank Dr. Dewar for his presentation at the Rotary. It was an outstanding presentation, and also thank you to Dr. Smith. As many of you may know, I am an attorney with the research lab, and so occasionally they will let me outside of the base and allow me to engage in some STEM activities. And so I was very lucky to have judged one of our science fairs at Fairbrook Elementary um, two weeks ago. And let me tell you, some of the things that those students were doing was just astounding. Now the one that was of particular interest to me was which coffee mug will keep your hot cocoa hottest <laughs> the longest. And there was about eh, 10 different coffee mugs that had ranged in different degrees. And so it was very important for me as a coffee drinker, but important to the student as a hot chocolate drinker. And so that was interesting. There were also several other things, um, measuring pH and the way that your body metabolizes different foods. And so just astounding, great work by our kids. So it was fun to do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Chamber Facebook page. I don't know if any of you are active on there, but even if you're not a member of the Chamber of Commerce, I would encourage you to go and like their page. Every week they do this fun week welcome and they talk about all the events that are going on in the businesses in our community. And then at the end of the week they also do kind of a wrap up. So the things that you didn't get to visit or maybe the events that you didn't get to attend, you can kind of see what went on there. And so I encourage everyone to like their Facebook page. And last, certainly not least, I wanted to give a shout out and a thanks to the police department for escorting our boys bowling team to state. The boys were able to place in the top 16th of D1 teams. And so congratulations to them and thank you to the police department. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank right, you. Thank you. Councilmember Adams. Uh, well, a couple things have already been said, but uh, the resident sciences, uh, it's amazing technology those guys are working on out there. Uh, and to have that here in Beaver Creek is, is a real I think Feather in our hat, it, even though we're not doing it, I think it's having that here is a, uh, I was thoroughly impressed with that machine that they're building to check the radio, radar signature of uh, airplanes. And uh, you can tell just how big a radar signature they have right. so they can keep those uh, out of sight, out of mind, I guess. <clears throat> I attended the 4th of July committee meeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we're on track for another great celebration this year. We've already got 15 food trucks scheduled. They're gonna to try to get five more. Uh, they are still looking for a grand marshal, so if anyone out there wants to nominate someone, please do so. Uh, I also attended the elected officials training. Uh, it was a good training with Councilman Bales and Councilwoman Schwartz. Uh, it was a great day to be there, listen to uh, uh, different uh, local mayors, city managers and attorneys, uh, gave us some good information. And it was great to spend the day with those two. I mean, it was a, a well good day. Uh, attended the Beaver Creek Youth Development Committee meeting uh, recently, and uh, the BYC is starting to uh, wrap up for this year. Uh, they're going to be electing officers uh, for next year, uh, this coming month. And I believe that they're going to be coming before council sometime towards the end of May to recognize the seniors. Uh, and I highly recommend that if you've got a child in the sixth, to, sixth grade to twelfth grade, get them involved in that. It's a good leadership training uh, program and uh, just gives them a lot of uh, insight into how things work within the city and the business world and teaches them uh, how they're going to survive a little bit when they get into the real world. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Dr. Dewar here, Councilman Dewar and uh, Dr. Smith for the presentation that they gave it Rotary, it was, it was about Ukraine and Russia and uh, the history that they provided uh, was, was really amazing. I, I, I can't thank you enough. I wish we could have lasted another couple of hours. It was, uh... then the middle school robotics teams had their state competition this past weekend. And I think seven of our local teams have qualified to go to Dallas, Texas for the national competition coming up later this year. I don't know exactly when that is, but uh, I was able to attend their competition they had out here and these kids are for middle schoolers are amazing what they can do with the electronics and the programming and uh, that so if you get a chance to be a part of that either the robotics team or the uh, I think uh, the Lego League uh, different ones like that uh, take advantage of it to see what these kids are doing and with that that's all I have thank you sir thank you councilmember Dewar thank you mayor um, 
Like a number of council members, I had a chance to attend the Mayor's First Thursday at Resident Sciences and just uh, a wonderful facility expansion. Uh, get very excited about uh, improvements and upgrades in Beaver Creek, and so congratulations to them, and thanks for uh, opening the facility for us to see. I'd like to thank uh, my fellow council members for their very kind words on my presentation. I'll pass those along to my colleague, Dr. Mark Caleb Smith. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank uh, Councilmember Bales, Mike Swick, and Mark Weinstein for the invitation. Uh, really thankful and wonderful questions. And I had a, a chance to make a similar address at University Baptist Church on the 6th. Uh, thankful for the invitation from Pastor Jason Wing on that. And just to pray for the people of Ukraine. Uh, there are many brave people in Russia that have also gone out to protest against their own government. Uh, significant personal costs and it's a it's a brutal conflict uh, and to pray for its uh, swift end uh, so thank you mayor thank you sir and thank you again for that presentation that I've been my mind has been working trying to decide where are other places where you could and your colleagues could do a presentation like that because more people need to hear what you two had to say so thank you thank you uh, councilmember Bales Thank you, Your Honor. I think I'll start off by uh, thanking El Toro for uh, moving to Mimi's at the Green as we just passed that motion for their liquor license. And I happened to enjoy that restaurant over the weekend and run into fellow council member Curran there with his wife. And so uh, anyway, it's delicious. I enjoy it and uh, look forward to visiting that location at the Green. Uh, let's see. I talked. It was mentioned about the uh, elected official and administrator training that we attended. I thought it was very beneficial for both elected officials and administrators who were present. Uh, we learned about sunshine laws and ethics, um, as well as uh, municipal finance, which I thought was really great. Um, some tr strategic communication examples, and, uh, and then a lot of um, issues before like the Ohio Municipal League and things that are facing our, our state legislature. So it was very valuable. Um, thank you, Dr. Dewar, for your speech. That was fantastic. And I echo everyone else's comments there. And also, congratulations to the middle school VEX robotics team. There were indeed seven um, teams that, that qualified for the world championships this May. Wanted to let everybody know that I will be attending the Little Miami Watershed Network meeting on April 1st. Uh, that was one of the committees that I had signed up for, and they reached out to me, and, and we've got a meeting set up. Um, kind of a random comment. Last night I was on the phone with my 96-year-old grandmother. She lives in Beaver Creek. And she called me specifically to tell me that she loved the in-touch. That's what she wanted to, me to hear. Right. She said it was uh, this this issue of the in touch was very impactful, and she appreciated all of the information that was given. And uh, I think at the last council meeting, I I brought a copy with me and urged everyone to read it. And uh, so she must have taken that to heart. But um, there is a lot of great information in there. So thank you to everyone who puts that uh, newsletter together. And uh, always nice to hear. Uh, from my grandmother and especially when she wants to talk about how great we're doing as a city. So that's that's awesome uh, Finally uh, next week, I will be missing our work session. I will be on spring break with my kids So I would appreciate um, an excused absence, but I wish uh, you all the best with the uh, Joint school board meeting. So that's all I've got Thank you Vice Mayor Garcia Thank you. So I know Councilmember Kern mentioned, but I was able to go to the VFW annual awards with the mayor. It was great to see our youth and first responders and teachers recognized at this event. It, it was really well done. I did attend the MVRPC meeting, and I was reappointed to the executive board. So I'll be serving on the executive board for the next two years for MVRPC. <coughs> the membership dues that we discussed will be increasing, will actually not increase until next year. So this year's dues are going to remain on the 2010 census, and then next year they'll increase to 2020. And to talk about some of the great things that we do get from MVRPC, 
on the March 3rd meeting, we were approved for a number of improvement programs in Beaver Creek. So we were able to get funding for the Colonel Glenn Highway resurfacing, the Indian Ripple Road widening project, the North Fairfield Road widening project uh, from North Fairfield Road to Fairwood Drive to Kemp Road. And then we were also able to receive some additional funding through the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. Uh, so through that, we were able to get funding for the Grange Hall Road resurfacing. And then through the transportation alternatives, we were able to get the Shakertown Road side path project funded as well. So not all of these were fully funded through MVRPC, but we did get a substantial amount of money in the six, seven figures uh, per project, which is really great to see. Uh, but otherwise, we had a really good meeting at MVRPC. And I think I have the honor of announcing our anniversaries this month. All right. So I do have the employee anniversaries, and we have quite a lot. So I'll go through them all. We have Andrew McVicker with public service of five years, Matt Fries, public service of 10 years, Officer Sean Williams with 17 years, uh, Ashley Marshall also with the police department, four years, our own Katie Carrico with communication celebrates her one year, and she's still here. <laughs> Keith Duncan with the police department of 15 years, Chris Unroe with the police department of 23 years, uh, Jeff Vaught in engineering of one year, Tony Nuss in Parks for one year. Eric Conley with the Golf Department for four years. Josh Kirschbaum with Parks, 21 years. Ursula Krauss Carey for Public Service was four years. Russell Mann with Golf is six years. Timothy Lammert with Police is 23 years. Kaylee Burnt with the Police is two years. Dylan Zimmerman with the Police is also two years. Alex Harris with Public Service, eight years. Travis Houston, public service, eight years. Dawson Randolph, golf, five years. Phil Wesslier, police, 29 years. Don Hutton, planning and development, one year. Alex Flick, golf, four years. Roy Stafford, golf, eight years. And Gregory Staller, golf, seven years. So thank you so much to all of our employees. March seems to be a big year for anniversaries. Uh, hopefully it brings us some good luck and some better weather than we had with that snow on Friday. But otherwise, that is it for me. So thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. All right, well, first, it's good to be back. And uh, thank you for uh, taking over during my absence. But it was uh, much appreciated. And uh, my wife and I had a great time on vacation. Uh, there's a lot coming up. Uh, there's a lot been going on. Oh, well, who put that thing up there? <laughs> Well, anyway, this is, uh, again, Katie's work, and Katie has uh, put this uh, the, for the social media, some of the locations I'm going to be at uh, upcoming. Tuesday with tomorrow, I'll be at Reza's. Uh, then on, at Harbor Chase, uh, Thursday, I see the 24th, Panera Bread, Wednesday the 30th. But in between there, yeah. I'm going to be at the Senior Center on the 18th. And... Uh, and we may, uh, depending on uh, how things go, we may do a couple more before the election. But uh, please get the word out that we're, we're not going to be a sales pitch. We're not doing anything other than being present for people to ask questions and answer them. I mean, it's not sit there. So please come out. If you've got five minutes, if you've got a half hour, whatever it is, uh, just come out and and uh, bring your question with you if you have one. We're going to try to explain to the best of our knowledge what's going on. Uh, so, Charles, I would love it if you would attend with me at the Senior Center. Well, I'll be there. That's, the, uh, that's 1030 on the 18th. Yep, I'll be there. And the other three, if there's anyone that would like to attend, join me, you're more than welcome. Uh, we don't want to make a crowd out of it, so if there's anybody that just wants to do one of them, uh, please let me know and please come out. Uh, Katie's going to be there to, uh, to uh, I'm not going to suggest what it might be, but she's probably going to try to keep me from going astray. But uh, so, there you go. That'll be fun. But I'm looking forward to it. and. Uh, you know, we, we encourage everybody to get out and get educated as best they can on this issue. Uh, let's see. We have the, uh, you've all read about the opioid uh, settlements and that, that the state has divided things up into different 
committees or whatever you want to call those. Uh, but anyway, Greene County is one of seven in a particular group. Uh, Commissioner Gould is trying to put together a team in Greene County. Uh, he's sh had some examples of what some of the other counties have done. Uh, some are mayors, some are police chiefs, some are administrators. But I, my thought was that uh, I was hoping that uh, our chief would be responsible for that because most of the opioid monies affect the police department. Well, the chief has uh, graciously said that he, he would prefer that his one of his captains be appointed to that position as Captain Sumner. And so uh, that uh, decision will be made here before too long. But so if any of you have any thoughts or uh, comments on that, please get with uh, myself or with Pete, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. And it, it's not. 100% limited to just us putting one on, but uh, for sure I wanted the police department represented on that. Uh, let's see. The VFW, it was all, it's always great to see the, the uh, youth and uh, the effort they go to at the VFW to, uh, to demonstrate their patriotism, and it's, uh, it was fun. So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, boys swim team. I think most everybody knows that the boys swim team came in first in Division I. Uh, and uh, we are going to have the privilege of having them here, I believe, on April 25th. Is that correct? And so we, uh, we are uh, having the road department create our signs. And, you know, it, uh, these signs are getting, you know, getting to be a lot of them, you know. But uh, it's always a pleasure to see, again, the, uh, the kids. Uh, what else did I have? I think that's just about it. We do have, I know sev several of you are going to uh, go to a scout meeting coming up. I think uh, Don and or Council Member Adams, Council Member Garcia, and Council Member Curran were wanting to go uh, to yeah. that that uh, scout meeting. Uh, so I think that's, it, I don't know how many members are in that troop, but I didn't want it to be too overbearing to where we had more people there than the, than the troop. So uh, I, I, I know you all will do a fantastic job of, of uh, answering their questions. Uh, well, again, oh, the training. We did mayors and managers uh, last week, and uh, one of your trainers, I guess, might have been uh, Mayor Bill Duncan from Oakwood. Well, he didn't say that he was a trainer when I saw him Wednesday, and he just said, I saw, and he complimented. He says, you have a very good council. He says, I, he complimented the fact that you were all there. And uh, so I says, well, Mayor, I says, uh, how, he's been mayor for like 20 years or whatever it is. I says, is it taking you this long to go attend one of these classes? <laughs> but anyway, we have fun at the mayor's managers. But uh, I just wanted to pass along Mayor Duncan's comment that he, uh, he enjoyed your company at the, uh, at the training. So with that, I will uh, let it go, and we will turn it over to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just uh, wanted to, uh, uh, Vice Mayor Garcia brought this up, so I just want to congratulate staff. This is the MVRPC. There was an email I sent to staff, uh, or to uh, council just earlier this afternoon after I got the award letter. Uh, so basically you're looking at about $3.4 million in grants, and then which will require the city to have about $2.2 .2 million in uh, match money um, so you're talking you know five point about five point six million dollars in total uh, total uh, uh, funding uh, which equates to I mean yeah where else can you get uh, you pay somebody gives you 60 percent and you pay 40 percent I don't know any better place <laughs> I think all of us would trade money <laughs> if that they would give us 60 we'd give them 40 uh, so congratulations, thank you to staff, the engineering staff, Mr. Mormon and his staff, 
Um, re if you recall, when we uh, council approved applying for these, that we said it's not necessarily what's most needed, but it is what's best possibility of getting the grant funds. And I think this was uh, five out of six or so. We only got one grant that didn't didn't uh, get money maybe next time, a Kemp Road project. So congratulations to staff. Job well done, uh, Mr. Mormon. Um, moving on to Beaver Creek Police Department. This is something we uh, first time we're doing it. Miami Valley Crime Prevention Association is bringing to Beaver Creek its uh, first four-week crime prevention academy. And the academy is free and will include the history of community policing, crime prevention, along with the topics you see there. Um, a little bit to go into that, but there's over a, uh, a several day events, Thursday, April 7th, 14th, 28th, 6 to 9, then a Saturday, April 23rd at 9 a.m. to noon, and uh, being he held at Lafino Plaza, that's a good location to have such things. But to register, if you're interested in this, this is a Crime Prevention Academy. So this is not the Police Academy. Uh, it's a little different, okay, different focus. Uh, Police Academy, we will have one of those, uh, uh, Lord willing, this year. Uh, COVID, something doesn't drastically happen. Uh, but we will have that later this year. But a Crime Prevention Academy, to register, visit beavercreekohio.gov. Uh, backslash crime prevention um, to uh, sign up for that while there's room. I'm sure this is probably going to fill up rather quickly, but good information to be provided. Uh, registration for the parks, this starts to, tomorrow for the summer camp, uh, opens tomorrow, March 15th. The division is offering eight weeks of consecutive camp beginning June 6th through the end of July, so you need to sign up uh, beginning tomorrow. The camp will be held at Fairbrook Elementary uh, School Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 3.30 p.m. Extended hours available in the morning and afternoon. Campers will explore outdoors, participate in a variety of games and activities, create crafts, play sports, and meet new friends. Each work week, each week will have a different theme, including Pirate Week, Animal Kingdom, Under the Sea, and more. And this is the exciting part. Uh, field trips are back each week so because of covid you know we had to cancel you know because of transportation and being next to one another but field trips are back and to register vi visit beaver creek ohio uh, dot my rec dot com again registration begins tomorrow and i imagine uh, spots will go fast and i can't express enough about seasonal hiring we are still in need, uh, again, for golf and for our maintenance, for our parks division. Uh, it's anywhere from helping us mow and keep maintain areas to uh, working at the golf course um, to, um, again, public service parks. There's all of them. We uh, usually hire somewhere around 80 seasonals to operate uh, on a usual basis, and I know our numbers are are uh, not uh, coming in like we would hope they do. We are competitive uh, wage. Uh, so please, if there's any interest, uh, don't be indoors and in air conditioned. Get out to the great, <laughs> the great unknown, right? The great weather. And these jobs will definitely keep you outside and keep you moving versus, uh, you know, some other jobs that may just be indoors all summer and you'll never see daylight. So come see daylight with the parks and public service and golf club and have a little fun while you're at it. Uh, so visit beavercreekohio.gov and you'll see the employment uh, and click on that and get applying for that before it's too late. That's all I have tonight. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to back up, if council doesn't mind, just a second and add two things. The groundbreaking. Oh, yeah. We have a groundbreaking Wednesday evening at Wardinger Park for the uh, uh, reconstruction of the Zimmer Barn. So uh, please come out and join us for that. And lastly, congratulations to Wright State Basketball. Yeah, wow. And we wish them well in their game Wednesday night. So, thank you. All right, citizen comment. Is there anyone here tonight that would like to address council on any issue, <laughs> any issue whatsoever? <laughs> Seeing none, we will close citizen comment section and may I have a motion for executive session. I move to enter into executive session pursuant to section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code for the purpose of consideration of the employment of a public employee. Second. 
I have a motion and a second to enter into executive session. May we have a roll call, please? Vice Mayor Garcia. Yes. 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 There will there will be no decisions that come from this executive session, so the televised portion of this meeting will end. And uh, so uh, we are now in executive session. Thank you very much.